Hi everyone, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to the first video in Module 2 in AEDT 4110, Assessment for Adult Learning in a Digital Context. In this module, we will examine three core ideas. First, we will look at two problems of learning to teach. Then we will examine some preconceived notions you may have about teaching and learning. And then we'll revisit your preconceptions and reflect on how they affect your learning and attitude toward teaching, learning, and of course, assessment. But first, we'll start off with the analysis questions. And as always, we'll wrap up with the synthesis questions. Please answer these three analysis questions before moving on with the video. Answering these questions will help you to understand how you currently view assessment and perhaps your attitudes towards teaching and learning. Pause the video now and come back when you have your answers. Okay, welcome back. With your thoughts now clear, let's move on to examine some problems with teaching and learning. You may be surprised to discover that our prior assumptions about teaching and learning, including assessment, affect how we view education. According to the authors of a 2007 study, there are two problems and one misconception about learning to teach. First, there is a problem of enactment. Next, there is a problem of complexity. And finally, there is the misconception of teaching. Let's look at each a bit closer. The problem with enactment refers to educators learning to enact or put into action a great variety of things, sometimes simultaneously. Individuals learning to teach learn about the content, have the required skills and knowledge, and apply the theory. The authors give the example of educators discussing, facilitating tasks, and assessing, explaining, managing, all at the same time. The second problem the authors identify is the problem of complexity. Complexity refers to the juggling academic and social goals with the complex relationship that occurs within the learning environment. The relationship is between the educator, learners, and the subject matter. For example, educators need to consider the ever-changing needs of the learners and the unexpected events of the learning environment, rather than just plowing through the content. The authors explain the trade-offs within the academic and social goal context might occur daily or perhaps even by the moment. The final problem of learning to teach refers to the misconception of teaching, and this is why you are asked to consider your prior assumptions of assessment. The misconception refers to the notion that new instructors need to approach teaching from a way that is different from how they may have experienced teaching practices as a learner. Learner experience can create strong preconceptions about teaching and learning, and it is these preconceptions that new instructors bring to their own classroom. This is not to say that what we experienced is right or wrong. It just means that we need to revisit our experiences, our current conceptions of what it means to teach and learn, which includes assessment and how those experiences may have created our own preconceptions. The 2007 study suggests that educators address their preconceptions about teaching because they may hold on to teaching practices that may be ineffective without even realizing it. For example, do you give 60-minute lectures and weekly tests because of previous experience? Post-secondary educators have a point of view. Authors of a 2014 study contend that post-secondary educators make curriculum decisions based on practical teaching experiences and their knowledge and belief related to how curriculum materials is designed, adopted, or used. This implies that university educators have personal approaches to choosing teaching materials. Teaching experience and ability to reflect on teaching practices are valuable, but acquiring andragogical knowledge and skills provides educators with diagnostic knowledge to solve andragogical problems. Teaching and learning centers offer workshops to help educators with their teaching practices, but it's suggested that educators' desire to increase their teaching skills, knowledge, and professional development is driven by the Institute's culture. Last week, we looked at how you described assessment. Now you should begin thinking about your prior learning experiences. 
Consider any learning experience. What comes to mind? What are your preconceptions of assessment or even taking notes? How has problem-based learning changed your preconceptions? There is one synthesis question for this video. How have your preconceptions of teaching and learning influenced your notions of assessment? We will discuss your preconceptions in this week's tutorial, so it might be helpful to write down a few examples and be ready to share them with the class. Finally, don't forget that your learning experiences changed as you progress from kindergarten to university. You may wish to reflect on how your views of assessment changed throughout your years in education. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.